Sanmonane. It's good to be back and welcome. I am a creative artist in music operating out of Johannesburg, South Africa, and my name is Concord Nkabinde. It's a great pleasure for me to share on this platform that has been made possible by the Cape Town Music Academy, a platform where various music industry professionals share and give advice from their personal experience. So do take the time to check out other videos in this series on the Cape Town Music Academy social media spaces. I have five short videos to share with you, and this is video number two of the five. This second video is entitled Being a Band Leader. The other topics that I cover on the other four videos are being independent, being a session musician, being creatively young and old, and also being a servant of the industry. I hope you'll get time to watch those videos as well. For many years now, I have been working as a session musician under many band leaders. Uh, for those of you that may not be familiar with the term session musician, a session musician is that musician that gets booked to come and contribute towards a project or a concert or a recording as a guitarist, as a drummer, as a singer, or even as a, a musical arranger. So it's not a permanent uh, booking, uh, it comes and goes. Uh, I still work as a session musician to this day and I enjoy it very much. But I've also for some years now been a band leader. And uh, for me, going back and forth between the two roles of being a band leader and being a session musician is something I find very, very interesting. Um, striking a balance between leading and being led is a dynamic that is very, very humbling, uh, I find. Unfortunately, there are band leaders who seem to view leading as an exercise of power and control. Just because you're a band leader may not mean that you know it all. But also, it doesn't mean that just because you are booking and paying people for a particular project that you have to treat them badly and not show them any respect. No. I also find that there is a general practice by some band leaders of keeping band members in the dark about details of a particular show or project where you just enjoy people coming back again and again to beg for information. Like basic information like how much is the gig paying or what time is the show? Are we driving back or staying over after the show? So there's this constant effort to disempower band members and make them feel small and inadequate. And that attitude also finds its way onto stage, where a band leader tries by all means not to help the audience to appreciate the band members by suppression and unnecessary control, so that at the end of the show, all the glory will come to the band leader. The honest truth is that at the end of each show, the band leader tends to take all the glory. However, as band leaders, deep down, we know that we couldn't have pulled it off without the awesome musicianship that surrounds us on stage. Some of you may not be aware of this dynamic, but in many projects, and I can't believe that I'm saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. In many projects, the band leader, who is the name that people have paid money to come and see, could actually musically be the weakest link of the project. So, so the rest of the musicians now have to work hard to make sure that they make the band leader sound good and come out strong. And the band leader knows this, for sure. You would think that because they know this, they would recognize that situation 
and by understanding the strong and the weak points of the project that they would appreciate the band's contribution and, uh, and give them the respect that they deserve. You'd also think that uh, they would use that opportunity of being surrounded by su such great musicians to actually learn and grow in their own uh, personal musicianship. You'd also expect them to be proud and let the audience know and appreciate the caliber of musician that is in this band. And very funny how even that very act of acknowledging and appreciating your band will still bring glory to you as the band leader because people see you as someone who has this ability to put together a strong project with so many good musicians in it. But I guess uh, some band leaders don't see even that. I think being a band leader actually means being a follower. I think being a king means being a servant. You see, servanthood is a concept that is generally not encouraged in our industry or in showbiz. Servanthood tends to be likened to being weak, being a doormat for others. Everything just seems to be about grabbing as much as you can, even if it means trampling on others. So let me end by just encouraging band leaders on these next five points. One, you do not need to be threatened by the excellence of the musicians that you have booked. Celebrate them. Good and in-demand musicians that they are, they still have come into your project and honored your music and made you sound good. I mean, why did you book them in the first place? Secondly, in any project, provide your band members with adequate information and details about the project. Just so that people have no worries. You can just take care of the uncertainties and people can start focusing on the music itself. Thirdly, openly discuss money issues. Money, money, money. The habit of beating around the bush, not talking about money, and only after the gig, you call the musicians and mention for the first time to them that, oh guys, by the way, this was a promotional show, so don't expect much money. And this is after five days of full day rehearsals and driving out of town to do this gig. That thing must come to a stop. And I hope that session musicians themselves will proactively put their foot down and just say enough is enough. Uh, the fourth point is um, as much as you are a band leader, a convener and a facilitator of a project, try and not suppress beautiful ideas. Um, some people suppress those ideas just because they're not their own ideas, but they come from the rest of the band. Um, it, I think it's good to create an environment where people are free and open to bring up ideas and to contribute um, in a beautiful way that at the end of the day, the whole project will just sound amazing. And finally, just be a good listener. And after you've finished listening, listen some more. And um, just in closing, it's a beautiful thing, once again, to be put in a situation where you lead and sometimes you are being led. And there are so many lessons to be learned at different levels of that interaction. And as band leaders, we should embrace that if you are the one that also gets to do other people's work and work as a session musician, learn from it. It can only enhance your own leadership skills. Please don't forget to follow, like and subscribe 
to the Cape Town Music Academy on social media spaces so you can learn and enjoy more interesting videos from other artists. I'd like to end off with a quotation by John Quincy Adams. I quote, If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Unquote. I thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah.